So uh, this past summer we had a few trees come down. Uh, this dry wash, a lot of lot of water comes down through here with the um, the floods we've been having. So maple trees, other trees, they end up falling on all of our tubing and um, brings the tubing down. And if you don't get it cleaned off before the next flood, it'll rip your tubing out of here. So we're cleaning up trees. You guys got here a little bit after the dangerous stuff. Um, but there are several trees down over there and here, basically pinning all of our tubing down. So we got to clean all that up and then go through and restringing re the tubing back up in the air, get it nice and taut so the sap will flow down the valley towards our tank. From right here, going up the valley, there's it's over a thousand taps that come through right through this. Jim's Woods comes in here with 500 taps and probably about six or 700 taps of my woods comes through here. I've got another seven or 800 down the valley that come in elsewhere. But yeah, this is like the main artery and this big tubing allows a large volume of sap to flow through and also to have an airspace so we get good vacuum up in the woods further. This landslide was four years ago. This one is the one where a whole bunch of trees pushed up right into a big pile right here. And it guided the water towards that hillside and the whole hillside gave away, filled the ravine and the water jumped up and came through this way. And our tank is in a pretty decently protected spot up against the side of the hill and away from the water. Well, the water was redirected right down this path here towards the tank and that's what picked our tank up and floated it away and crushed it. Um, two years ago these couple of maples came down and then last year we, and then two years ago that hillside right there collapsed and then last year we lost and you know they're they're next to a, a wash but the water used to stay kind of down in the middle and not eat away at the side so much. Now there's such a large volume of water coming through here every time that these floods happen and it happens fast because the ground up on the ridge tops can't hold it. There's so much corn and soy farming that does not hold the water. It runs down and all of the hillsides are so steep that it speeds up and it builds up and the volume is too much for these smaller ravines to handle. So it's widening it and causing quite a bit of destruction. So this is the new tank that we brought down here four years ago to replace our thousand gallon stainless tank that washed away in the flood. Um, we kind of built it up into the hillside a little bit better. It's strapped to this tree over here and we're actually going to probably build like a little deflector here um, and then we dug the road out about two feet deeper so if water does come through here again hopefully it just goes right past it and the tank is strapped to the tree, it shouldn't go anywhere. Um, every year, you know, tanks settle a little bit in the summertime um, with all the weight in them in the spring, you know, they kind of settle. So we have to kind of like come in and re-level it and make sure that the sap wants to go towards the, um, the outlet. Um, the releaser, we have a releaser that sits up on the top up here and dumps down into the down into the tank. Uh, all that stuff we take out in the off season and uh, someday we're going to build lids for this one. We had lids for our other one all nice and built but they all got destroyed in the floods. Um, so we'll bring a pump down in the spring and this thing will fill up you know every day and we have uh, tubing that we pump it up to the sugar house multiple times a day. Well, sometimes we'll pump this tank twice in one day. 4,000 gallons of sap a day from this woods. So we, tr we try and have our whole woods tapped by the 1st of March. Typically that's been when the sap has started flowing for us here in Wisconsin. Uh, so next two weeks we're out in the woods repairing cutting dead trees off of lines, fixing tubing, um, getting the tank cleaned out, um, getting our pumps down here, getting our releasers, getting all the tubing hooked up. And then by uh, 
mid-February, we, we start tapping. Uh, so we have 4,000 taps and we can do, you know, five, 600 a day, depending upon the size of our crew. So usually, you know, a week to 10 days is what it takes us uh, to tap. So usually by the 14th, we're out in the woods and getting started tapping. And, uh, in, in the past few years, the season has kind of started a little bit earlier. Uh, the weather has been less predictable than it was the first 10 years we were making syrup. Um, this last decade has been uh, more volatile with the weather.